One of the main goals of our laboratory is to understand the genetic basis of drug addiction and in particular alcoholism. I think we all know that while we may enjoy a drink here and there, that excessive use and abuse of alcohol is a major problem in medicine and society. Yet there is very uh, little understood about the problem and there are essentially uh, very few, if any, effective treatments. So we have approached this problem, uh, I would say, in a somewhat unusual way, in that we have used the uh, fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, as the model organism in which we want to decipher these alcohol-related mechanisms. So the way we go about this in general is, is we develop an assay in the fly, for example, for ethanol intoxication. And believe me, a drunk fly looks just like a drunk you or a drunk me. And uh, what we did then is we do completely unbiased genetic screens for mutations that affect intoxication. A previous postdoc in the lab screened through all these lines to isolate a loss of function mutation in the arouser gene. To test for sedation, we expose flies to a known concentration of ethanol vapor and measure the time it takes for them to lose their writing reflex. After 15 minutes, the arousal mutant in the bottom tube clearly shows an increased sensitivity to ethanol sedation. Therefore, arousal functions to inhibit ethanol sensitivity. The question that one struggles the most with is what we call the how question. Is how is it that this gene affects the behavior of interest? So one way is to put arousal in a known genetic pathway. And previous evidence has suggested that the mammalian homologues of arousal function in the PO3 kinase pathway. So we therefore first test it with the PO3 kinase affects ethanol sensitivity. In short, we show the PO3 kinase pathway functions to promote ethanol sensitivity. Moreover, we show that arousal is required for the PO3 kinase pathway to affect ethanol sensitivity. We know that arousal functions in neurons to affect ethanol sensitivity, but what's actually going on with these neurons at the cell biological level that makes the flies hypersensitive to alcohol? Interestingly, previous work from Alberto Ferruz's lab has shown that if you overexpress PO3 kinase, you can increase synapse number. We show the arousal mutant also has an increase in synapse number. And increasing synapse number increases ethanol sensitivity. The truth is that at this point it's really a correlation. And it's not even that strong of a correlation. We had to find any possible way to strengthen this correlation to the point where we believe that there was causality. Previous work from Paul Shaw's lab has shown that if you isolate flies, you can decrease their synapse number. So according to hypothesis, isolated flies with decreased synapse number should also have a decreased ethanol sensitivity. And this is in fact what we found. Social isolation reduced ethanol sensitivity. And what was remarkable is that isolation also restored normal ethanol sensitivity and synapse number to the arousal mutant, suggesting that the environment can affect a genetic predisposition to ethanol sensitivity. So I think one of the most potentially provocative parts of this study is the identification of a complex biological process such as the formation and development of synapses and their disassembly under various genetic and environmental conditions as being crucial to determining ethanol sensitivity. And many genes seem to affect synapse number and they all also affect ethanol sensitivity. So we may have gotten to a process that's at the core of this behavior and I think that is um, what makes us particularly excited about this work.